From their breakout in the 1970s, the Muppets have been a cultural touchstone for so many. There's never a bad time to appreciate the ways in which they have continued to impress and engage an adult audience, despite their appearance as children's fair. Here are some things you might have missed as a kid. The original The Muppet Movie is a brilliant and fun origin story that, for the most part, is timeless. However, there are some ways in which it is very much a product of its time, such as the running Hare Krishna joke. Hare Krishna is a religious movement founded in 1966 and a natural fit for those within the hippie movement. In other words, it was the perfect punchline for a 1970s comedy. The Muppet Movie opens with Kermit the Frog sitting on a log in a swamp, happily playing his banjo. He's interrupted by a man, played by Dom DeLuise. Frantically paddling a canoe and exclaiming that he's lost his sense of direction. Kermit immediately suggests, Have you tried Harry Krishna? And thus the gag begins. Not long after, Kermit is observing Fozzy Bear's stand-up routine and mutters to himself, This guy is lost. The barkeep behind him says, Maybe you should try Harry Krishna. At this point, Kermit breaks the fourth wall and verbalizes what everyone is thinking. It's a running gag. Finally, after driving for hours and hours on their way to make it big in Los Angeles, Kermit and Fozzie pull over at a rundown church for a well-deserved rest. A sign outside the church says, Lost? Have you tried Reverend Harry Krishna? Completing the gag and observing the comedic rule of three. While the adults in the audience would be aware of this movement, it's unlikely that kids would catch any of the Muppets' religious jokes. They don't look like Presbyterians to me. Ever since they first arrived in the 70s, the Muppets have asked their audience to be somewhat conversant with the tropes of TV and movies. And while kids might totally understand that the sketch Pigs in Space is a reference to Star Trek, they're less likely to see the similarities to Lost in Space, especially if we're talking about modern-day audiences. However, even kids back in the 70s probably wouldn't get that the character of Dr. Strangepork is named for the Stanley Kubrick film Dr. Strangelove. These homages to classic films and TV shows might be lost on younger viewers, but they've continued for decades. Most recently, the Alien franchise was referenced during a Pigs in Space sketch, where Pepe the King Prawn surprises the crew and pops in for a guest appearance. I don't know who you are, buddy, but your stomach is a dump. Oh, do you eat like a pea? Seeing as how the Muppets became popular in the 1970s, it makes sense that references to rock and hippie culture are baked into many of the characters, most notably the members of Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. This ragtag group of musicians include bassist and singer Floyd Pepper, whose name is a tribute to the British rock band Pink Floyd, as well as the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. On top of all that, guitarist and singer Janice with her lethargic, spaced-out voice, drooping eyelids, and bell-bottom jeans is a stereotypical stone flower child. Oh wow, wait till I tell the guys in the band. And during their performance of the song Can You Picture That in the Muppet movie, the band helps disguise Kermit and Fozzie's car by painting it in psychedelic rainbow colors. Very typical of them, but more perplexing to Kermit. With their eccentric personalities, the electric mayhem surely appealed to kids. But their specific callback to free love and rock music might have been more obvious to children of the 70s. The Muppets have never shied away from joking about the birds and the bees. Of course, these references were never lewd and always between fully mature frogs, pigs, chickens, and whatever Gonzo is. One of the few instances of the Muppets overtly spelling things out was during the opening sequence of an early pilot show, which had a very suggestive title. Then there's the entire episode of The Muppet Show with Raquel Welch, which ramped the sauciness factor up to 11. There was a dance number with an eight-legged freak, an intimate serenade with a smitten fuzzy bear, and a duet between Welch and Piggy about the power of womanhood. The episode even includes some implications about Kermit and Piggy's private life. Tonight we have an internationally acclaimed actress, singer, dancer, and one of the sexiest ladies alive! You got that every night, frog. Also, one of the Muppets' most popular characters, Animal, is a walking, grunting, drumming embodiment of the id, acting on all his most base needs without consideration or remorse. He has a penchant for exclaiming woman any time he sees a member of the opposite sex he finds appealing, as he wastes no time before chasing them around. And who can forget Gonzo and his never-ending attraction to chickens? After after many years, it seems like Gonzo has finally settled down and is currently cooped up in a long-term relationship with Camilla. The beaky romantics are clearly in love with each other, even though some of their peers seem to think them as an odd couple. A beautiful thing between a man and a woman, but pretty weird between your blue roommate and a chicken. 
The Muppets have always loved their guest stars, but while some cameos are aimed towards children, others were purely for grown-ups. That's especially true when it comes to The Muppet Show, the classic TV series that featured a new celebrity guest every episode. While kids back in the day definitely would have appreciated watching Sylvester Stallone or Mark Hamill, chances are pretty good that they would have been baffled to see Russian ballet dancer Rudolf Nureyev performing Swine Lake with a human-sized pig. Another unexpected guest was Vincent Price, a classic horror fixture, who allowed his silliness to mix with his sinister side in one of the show's Halloween specials. Along these same lines, the Muppets welcomed shock rocker Alice Cooper, who, oddly enough, felt like a perfect fit for the show with his larger-than-life personality and flair for theatrics. Plus, Rita Moreno, one of the few people to win an Oscar, Emmy, Tony, and Grammy award, showed off her voice and perfect comic timing in a musical standoff with Animal. However, if kids of the 70s had trouble identifying these stars, you can bet that modern-day children would be completely baffled when revisiting the show. But you never know. Every so often, you meet a really cool kid who would have the perfect reaction to any of these classic Muppet moments. That was awesome! <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the bell so you don't miss a single one.